there is no way you can tell me that there's no reason for you to praise the Lord. The fact that you woke up, opened your eyes, and you're able to see another day, it's enough to praise him for the rest of your life. The fact that you have a roof above your head is enough to praise him. The fact that you can eat is enough to praise him. The fact that you can go to school is enough to praise him. That you can go to a job, that you have people who love you, that you can walk, that you're not hooked to a machine that is helping you breathe, that you walked out and you came back in safe, healthy, in one complete form. There are many other people who went out there and never came back. There are many people who said, see you later to the family members, and they were never found back. There are many people who went out and they're missing right now, but yet you came back. It's not because you're too good or too holy or whatever the case might be. It is simply because of the Lord's mercy and his favor and his grace and the fact that he sent his son to die for you so that you even have a chance at life. hey you guys what's up and welcome to another video i hope you guys are all doing well it's your girl diane faber back again i pray that the lord will open up your hearts to receive everything that's going to be spoken today and i do pray that if there's you know only one thing that you take from it that it will be something that will impact you in a positive and godly way for the rest of your life in jesus name amen so for those of you who are tuning in for the first time i am a youtuber whose content is focused on God, vlogs, you know, daily life. And that's a little bit of the gist, really. So if you're into godly content in the sense of like, you know, discussing Bible stories, discussing life, discussing, you know, the struggles, but also just the blessings that come with being a believer, you are definitely on the right channel. And I do pray that this channel adds more to your life and will definitely be able to help you with one or two things. And for those of you who are tuning back in, Welcome back, y'all. You know, sit, sit comfortable. You know, go to get your popcorn, go get your juice, go get your water, whatever the case might be. Sit back, relax, and for the next 20 minutes or so, listen to what I have to say, please. And I do hope and pray that it does something for you and it teaches you something. So let's get into this video. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Like, comment, and subscribe. And now we can get into it. So um, as for scriptures I've been focused on, it's still just really been Psalm 35 and Psalm 36. And we're just going to go over that again. Psalm 35 verse 1, plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. You know, when you find yourself in a period of spiritual warfare, I do think it's a very adequate and appropriate scripture because... Exodus 14 verse 14 tells us that we should hold our peace because the Lord fights for us, you know? So this scripture in connection to that scripture also helps with our prayer points to really like form it more and be like, God, you know, fight against those who fight against me, you know, go against them in any way that they're fighting against me in any area of my life. So for those of you who might have struggles when it comes to praying um, in times of difficulty, these are one of the scriptures that you can definitely use when praying because it can definitely help you, you know, to start your prayer and then as you go the holy spirit will do the rest because even when we do not know what to pray the holy spirit makes intercessions for us you know the holy spirit prays for us and prays through us too the next verse is psalm 35 verses 9 and it says and my soul shall be joyful in the lord it shall rejoice in his salvation you know the fact that we even have the privilege of being here today, of being able to serve the Lord without, you know, fear, without like, I don't know, just even persecution in a certain sense. That's only to his glory. But more specifically, the fact that you've just been saved, that's enough to be joyful for the rest of your life. You know, even when you're going through stuff, the fact that you're just saved, the fact that you have the privilege of knowing Jesus Christ, the fact that you, you're able to, to serve him, the fact that he's able to use you because you've given yourself completely to him, that's enough to be happy forever. Um, correction, to be joyful forever because happiness, it comes and goes. But having joy, that's something that's constant. And it says, and my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. So... Your soul is so important because I do believe that that's the driving force that keeps you going in life, you know, that keeps you walking regardless of whatever, you know, you might feel. Because if you have a joyful soul, regardless of whatever situation you're put in, you're still going to, you know, be optimistic and still try to move through that situation because you know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And um, we also got... Mm, Verses 12, they reward me evil for good to the sorrow of my soul. 
I know that all of us Christians as just human beings have gone through stuff with people where you're like, I did every single thing that I could for this person or for these people. I did my best, whatever and whatnot, but the results are just really, yeah, the opposite of what I had anticipated and that really sucks. But I mean, it might sound harsh, but that's life. I'm gonna have to tell you the way it is. Sometimes you will do uh, a lot of things for people. Sometimes you're gonna go through hoops and you know so many other sort of situations for other people and the way they repay you is not really the best. They might, you know, repay you through just hurting your feelings and doing stuff that's just not really nice. But I will say it definitely helps to come to the Lord, to vent to him and be like, God, this is how I'm feeling. This is how things are going. Because as you vent to the Lord, you're already emptying your heart. You're emptying everything that might be used against you through the, um, through the devil. And, um, It helps you to also have a more clear mind because when you're like thinking about like, oh, I did all of this for this person or for these people and look at how I was rewarded. You just keep thinking about that. After a while, you're going to become bitter and you do not want that. But as you talk to the Lord, you bring everything before him and you allow him to take all those burdens, all those thoughts and hurt and every single thing. You're going to see that you're more free. You're going to see that you're more at ease and, and just more peaceful too, in a sense. And another scripture I had from the same verse, 28, and my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. In another verse, it says, I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. So basically it's just talking about how like you will praise the Lord. You will speak of him every single time, wherever you are in the midst of people. And it's just a scripture that I really just love because Regardless of whatever you face, I know I said it a lot of times, but it is really true. Regardless of whatever you face, keep praising the Lord through the good, through the bad, through the ugly, through the beautiful. Keep praising him because there is no way you can tell me that there's no reason for you to praise the Lord. The fact that you woke up, opened your eyes, and you're able to see another day, it's enough to praise him for the rest of your life. The fact that you have a roof above your head is enough to praise him. The fact that you can eat is enough to praise him. The fact that you can go to school is enough to praise him. That you can go to a job, that you have people who love you, that you can walk, that you're not hooked to a machine that is helping you breathe, that you walked out and you came back in safe, healthy, in one complete form. There are many other people who went out there and never came back. There are many people who said, see you later to the family members and they were never found back. There are many people who went out and they're missing right now, but yet you came back. It's not because you're too good or too holy or whatever the case might be. It is simply because of the Lord's mercy and his favor and his grace and the fact that he sent his son to die for you so that you even have a chance at life. And The more you think about that, the more it helps you to walk differently in your walk with the Lord. The more it helps you to be, you know, more in awe of the Lord, the more it helps you to walk in that holy fear, you know, to not be familiar with the Lord. There's no reason for you to be familiar with the Lord. Please don't do that because familiarity with the Lord is what will kill you at some point. Let that sink in and let that marinate. And another scripture I also focused on was Psalm 36, as I mentioned before. From verses 5 to 6, your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are great deep. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. It just talks about the depth of the Lord's mercy, of his faithfulness, of his righteousness, and his judgments. If you take time to really dive into those four things that I just mentioned, I also think that I also think that it broadens your perspective, it broadens your opinion, and it affects the way you walk in Christ. It affects the de- um, the decisions that you make. It affects the people that you sur- um, surround yourself with, and it affects you know the way you just do things, the people you choose to surround yourself with, etc. And the more you just get to know the Lord, the more you're transformed, and the more things around you as within you start changing. And as I was reading those two verses, it just really came to me because I'm like, honestly, if I only like take time to dive into the Lord's mercy, I could be there for like 50 years and I'd still have only like brushed the surface. And the next one is, let not the foot of pride come against me and let not the hand of the wicked drive me away. So let's focus on that pride part for a little second. We were praying um, in church and a sister in Christ mentioned how 
delaying things and procrastinating is still a form of pride because it's you having that confidence in thinking that you still have a chance at another day. The fact is, tomorrow is not promised. So you thinking that, well, you know, I'm going to do it tomorrow because I have it tomorrow is a form of pride. And that's why it's just important to just do it now, even when you don't seem to be ready, quote unquote, even when it seems like it's not the right time or whatever the case might be, do it now because you don't even know if you're going to be here tomorrow. And even if you are, uh, thank God. But don't be so confident in thinking that a tomorrow is promised for you. You never know. You never know when your last day is going to be. And it would really suck if you're already on your dying bed and you're like, oh, if I had just done it that day, even when I thought I was not ready. Hmm. It will not happen to you and me in Jesus name. Amen. As for um, verses that I meditated on, I'm not going to lie. There was no specific one that I meditated on, but I will say just more of something that I really learned out of experience was that, look, even when things seem unstable, even when it seems like you've just hit a wall in life, coming to God is the best thing you could do. Don't allow, you know, challenges and tribulation to drag you away from the Lord. That's when you're supposed to go even deeper in Christ and deeper in his word. But... It's important that when you've eventually come out of that, that you stay that deep and that you only continue to go deeper and deeper. And that's something that I've noticed as, you know, easier said than done. Not only for me, but I believe for a lot of other Christians out there too. So that's it. We're going to get into some of the things that I reflected over. And when I tell you guys, it uh, is quite a handful. I'm never going to lie to you. So y'all know the usual drill. If you see me not looking at the camera lens, it's because I'm looking at my phone, my Bible, or my laptop, which in this case is my laptop. Okay. First point is stop with the self-pity. <laughs> Look, this week I needed to be to be strict with myself. I needed to keep it a book because sometimes uh, the amount of excuses that we allow ourselves to get away with is crazy. So I had to take myself down with the Lord and I was like, girl, you got to get yourself together. You got to get your act together. Okay. You're here being all boo hoo hoo. You want this, you want that, but you're not doing anything for it. This Sunday's topic was, um, reward for your labor. If I'm not mistaken, let me go search it up real quick. Hmm reward for your labor. Okay. That's right. And basically the, the pastor was just talking about the fact that, you know, you cannot expect something that you did not work for. There's no way that you're, you know, um, wanting to like receive a reward, but you have not done any single thing for it. It's like saying, Oh, you have not worked a day this week, but yet you expect a loan. How does that make sense? How does that make sense? You feel me? It's like saying you want to pass for that one specific subject, but you know yourself that you did not study any day for it. It's like saying you want to get closer to God, right? But you're not reading your word. You're not spending time with him. It's like, you know, asking the Lord for this and that, but you're not meeting the requirements in terms of like, not in terms of, but in the sense of like, you're not doing what you have to do, what the Lord is telling you to do. I hope that makes sense. Self-pity is not going to get you anywhere. It's only going to drag you deeper and deeper into that pit. And in the worst case scenario, if death meets you there, that's one of the worst things that could happen to you. So do not allow self-pity to take away privileges from you, chances and opportunities and blessings. Okay. Yes. It might suck you know, that you're in this situation, it might really be just like, uh, disappointing that you find yourself in this place, you know, in this state of life or whatever the case might be, but just know that the Lord is good. Don't allow those problems to take you away from God. Don't allow those problems to, um, influence you in a bad manner and don't allow those problems to cause you to fall into this whole cloud of self pity. Oh, just being sad the whole time. And, you know, allowing your life to just pass you by and, before you know it, it's, it's done and you have not done anything, you know? So please, guys, stop with the self-pity. And it's easier said than done. I am very aware of that. But once you make that switch in your mind through the help of Christ, it does a lot. I would say just go to the Lord with it and be like, God, this is what I'm dealing with. I need your help with it. And pray consistently with discipline because it's not going to be a one-day job. It's going to take a while, but you also need to take the needed um, steps really to make sure that you meet the Lord in the middle as he's doing his part. You do yours too. You feel me? It's like having a huge and intense migraine and you're like, you know, I want to get better this, that, 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 but 
the medicine that's been created for a reason to treat that migraine is, is the same thing that you're not trying to take in. I mean, come on now. There's a reason why the Lord created all these professionals in different fields. And if you see that there's something that you're dealing with that a certain professional can deal with or that, you know, a prescribed medication can help you with, please do take it and ask the Lord for his help as you're going through it. And as you believe in the Lord, you're going to be healed and the Lord is going to help you through it. I cannot be like, God, heal, heal me from hay fever, for example, right? And not be taking my medication in and, and then being surprised when, you know, hay fever is yet dealing with me. I mean, come on now. And then having self pity and be like, oh, it's not working. I'm still here. Blah, blah, blah. Yadi di, yadi da. I mean, come on now. But the Lord will help us. The next point is take care of yourself, more specifically, your spiritual, mental, and physical health. Let's talk about it, folks. Let's talk about it. So we're going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 to 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your and in your spirit, which are God's. The NLT version says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. So back to what I said. Take care of yourself, more specifically your spiritual, mental, and physical health. You have to understand that the spiritual realm controls the physical realm. And if you're not good spiritually, that's going to affect your physical being. That's going to affect your feelings, your emotions, and just every single thing that is related to your physical health, your physical state. So it's very important to make sure that you're strong in the spirit, that you keep feeding your spirit so that it can grow stronger and stronger and stronger, but that you also take care of your you know, physical health. For example, if you know that you're not sleeping adequately, you're not sleeping well, it's also going to affect your, your spirit too, because you need the energy and the strength to pray. You need the energy and the strength to, to read his word, meditate on his word. And if you're not taking time to take care of your body, to put all the right nutrition in it, to make sure that you're doing the necessary exercises to make sure that you stay in shape healthily. Yeah. Well, it won't be surprising that you don't have the strength to pray. So spiritually pray, meditate on his word, spend time in his presence, you know, go on fellowship with, you know, other, um, fellow children of Christ, you know, go and, you know, spend time reading his word with other Christians to go to church, go to Bible studies, go to programs, conferences, as the spirit leads you. I'm not saying that you should just be going to random places, make sure that discernment plays in too, but yeah, you have that mentally, If journaling helps you do that, if it helps you to sit down, put your camera on, speak to your camera, get every single thing off of your chest, do that. If it helps you to go out for a walk so that you can air your mind, do that. If sleeping helps you, please do that, but make sure that it's not excessive too. Um, Whatever helps you to make sure that your mental health is stable, do that. As long as you don't hurt anybody or another person and it's something that is, you know, godly, that's the most important thing. So make sure that, you know, you take good care of your mental health, make sure that whatever you're using to make sure that your mental health is stable is something that is not contrary to the word of God. Okay. Let's get that out of the way in one um, time. But for me, for example, it helps to write, it helps to read, it helps to walk around, to go to the gym, to exercise and stuff like that. That's what helps me to be calm, to be well rested, to make sure that if my mind is cluttered, it becomes all free. So go and look for those things that help you to be relaxed, uh, you know, that helps you to have your mental health, ooh, be chill, be good and healthy. And physically, I would say, go for a walk, go for a run, do some wall climbing, hiking, whatever fits, you know, for you, whatever works for you, go and do that. If you're not a gym person, that's perfectly fine. You can still be healthy while not going to the gym. If you don't like running, you can still do many other things. There are many sports, many different activities that you can do that keeps you healthy and that you can still have fun with. So make sure that you look for it, find it, invest in yourself spiritually, physically, and mentally, because there are only good things that come can come out of it. And you're not only helping yourself, but you're also helping others as you're doing that too at once. So I pray that the Lord helps us because I will say sometimes it's quite a juggle to keep your spiritual, physical, and mental health in one line, but the Lord will help us because there's some days where it's the spiritual health that's good, but 
another day where it's like more of the physical health that's good and another day it's more of the mental health that's good and sometimes it seems like all three of them are down but at the end of the day the lord is good and he's the one that helps us even when some you know of the ones that i just mentioned are down or all of them but it is well it is well that's a motto that i've been saying for a while never gonna lie it is my motto because it is well next point is don't allow your emotions to overrule what god tells you to do now it won't take away the pain because he will tell you to do things that suck he will tell you to do things that you know hurt you like as a human being he will tell you to do things that will have you doubting yourself low-key he will tell you to do things that will have you like I don't know, Loki overthinking stuff. He will tell you to do things that will upset other people. He will tell you to do things that will have other people being confused and looking at you like, is it really God who told you or is it just you that wants to do it? Either way, the point is, God will tell you to do things that you might not necessarily want to do. He will even tell you things that you might have never imagined yourself doing. But at the end of the day, the Lord is the one who sees the bigger picture. And everything works together for those who tr- you know, trust in the Lord and who love him. So as you love him, you do his work, you know, um, his work, you obey him and you do every single thing that he has told you to do. And you ask the Lord to help you. I strongly believe that every single thing will work out for your good. Sometimes eh, it is when you obey God without one thing, it's like every single thing has become even worse. It's like, it's like, it's like the problem has gone hundred times worse. It's like, God, didn't you tell me to do this? Or am I tripping? You feel me? There's so many moments in life where I have done what the Lord has told me to do. And it seems like things were getting worse instead of better. But sometimes it needs to get worse before it gets better. I know. For some of y'all, it's like, girl, please. But it's true. It's true. And in this life, it, things won't always be easy. That's the honest truth. If there's one thing I've learned from this life in, you know, just my few years of, of cruising on this earth is that, you know things won't always come easily you will have your hard moments you have some days where you're rethinking your entire existence you're rethinking every single thing but as long as you keep in mind that the lord is good and he's the one who sees you through i kid you not that's what keeps me going and that's on period now hebrews 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and then going to james 2 verse 26 for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also You cannot have faith, but not be walking in faith and not doing things by faith. It does not work that way. Work and faith walks together because there are things that the Lord will tell you to do. And even when it does not make sense, even when you do not see, you know, where it's going to lead to, that's where your faith kicks in. And you're going to have to take that leap of faith. It's not only a saying, it's a fact, because that's what we ought to do as Christians. And... As somebody who has a lot of empathy for people, even if sometimes that might not seem that way, trust me, I promise you I'll be going through it. I'm like, God, please, please. And God's just there like waiting for me to just do what I need to do. He's like, child, please get on with it. But yeah, I will say every single time I've obeyed him, even if I did not see it immediately, at some point I always saw why he said what he said and why he did what he did so for that i give all the glory to the lord and the next thing is the beautiful thing about god is how he won't judge you it sounds ambiguous but it ain't let me explain let me explain okay so basically what i mean by that he won't judge you is in the sense of like let's say you lived a life full of sin or let's say you've been struggling with the sin know that the lord won't judge you in you know the way like um human beings will judge you like looking at you giving you side eye etc and whatever and whatnot you feel me but he is like a fair judge in the sense of like now when he needs to like judge you for what you've done right he's gonna be fair if you've done something wrong well you're gonna have to pay for the consequences you feel me so i really don't know if that makes sense because i know what i'm trying to say but i truly hope that comes across the right way you know god is a judge right like judge as in the way we have judges in law right but if you've done something wrong if you've done some sinful things don't think that god is going to be like oh you know you're too far gone to 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 come to me or whatever the case might be no instead god is just waiting for you with open arms so that you can come to him and he can do his work in you but it's important to keep in mind that he's still a judge in the sense of the fact that at the end of our whole journey 
he's going to have to judge you. Look at all the things that you've done. Look at all your actions and judge you based on all the work that you've done and every single thing that you've done in this life. I pray that makes sense. I pray y'all can meet me in the middle. And even if it doesn't, I pray that the Holy Spirit will interpret it for you. Amen. His unconditional and unwavering love is so overwhelming, but embracing at the same time. That's what I also wanted to add to that same point, because the fact that I know that he won't judge me, even though sometimes I do fall back in the same cycle of things that are not good for me, is what helps me to keep coming back to him, even when I feel disappointed in myself, even when I'm like, God, if I were you, I would not give myself a chance. That's where, you know, God is God, because he would still give me a chance. It's because he still loves me, you know? It's not even because I even deserve it, but it's because of his love and his mercy. It's because of just the love that he harbors for me. It's something that I never want to take for granted. It's something that I never want to see as, you know, like, oh, that's obvious. Like, why he he would do that for me? You know, like, why wouldn't he? Question is, why would he? Simply because he loves us. Because when I've done something wrong, right, and, or, you know, I've committed a sin or whatever the case might be, just the love that I feel from the Lord, him just being there for me, loving me, caring for me, and just showing me the way, it's just, wow, it's just overwhelming. Where other people would stop, that's where God still continues. And his unconditional love has been so wonderful. Only talking about that, that would be like for like hours and hours and hours of me just talking, right? But we don't got that time. My point is just, if you could just take a leap of faith into God's unconditional love, I promise you it will change your life forever. And it will change the way that you serve the Lord and you look at him and you perceive him. (sighs) Let's move to the next. Let's move to the next. And the last point. I am nothing without God. Okay? (laughs) The fact that I've come thus far is simply because of him. Every single thing connected and concerning me Every single thing connected to me as concerning me is only due to the grace of the Lord, is only due to his mercy, is only due to his love for me, is only due to his care for me. It is only due to just God being God, honestly, you know, and it is because I am nothing without God that when he tells me to do something, I will do it without blinking. I will not think too much about it. And even if I do, I'm still going to do what I need to do because I know that I am nothing without God. He's the one who put this breath into me. And he's the same one that can still snatch it away as quickly. I I don't even want to dare to even be familiar with him because he's the one who has given me this life. He's the one who sees the bigger picture. He's the creator of the universe. Let that sink. The creator of the universe. He's the one who has created every single person here. He's the one who literally has your life in his hands. And with that mindset and also asking the Lord to help me to remember that is what keeps me grounded and it's what keeps me going. It's what helps me to keep obeying the Lord and keeps me, you know, in his work and helps me to keep doing his work. And I pray that I will never be familiar with the Lord, that I will still be in awe of the Lord, that I will walk in holy fear. And I pray that for you too. It's not an easy thing sometimes, sometimes... (laughs) will be very tiring but i promise you it is totally worth it so i pray that the lord helps you as much as you know i i know and believe that he helps me and will continue to help me so i hope you enjoyed this episode i pray that you have you know taken at least one thing from this and i pray that whatever you take from this video will help you in your walk in life as well as in christ make sure it's uh, you know like comment and subscribe to share with your family and friends share it with your neighbor share with your grandma whatever the case might be and i will gladly and joyfully see you for the next episode of weekly reflection god bless you all bye tell about the healer greater is the one within a column as the leader